Hello and welcome to this video on how coaches can influence performance right before the athlete goes out to perform or in any case uh, how anybody goes out to do anything how they can be influenced to make it less stressful. So very simply the slides that I put up uh, talked about how I've used this with Olympic coaches, Paralympic coaches right before they've gone out to you to help athletes get medals. This is a technique that I try and get the coaches who I work with really familiar with so that they have some control and way to influence an athlete's performance. This also does a very useful thing is it gives the coaches something to control therefore they're also less anxious and less uh, stressed because they've got a controllable feature that they can modify. So I'm going to talk about this now there's, there's good advice obviously in the slides were put up uh, but I'm going to talk about this from a point of view of how to integrate this with an approach called motivational interviewing. I'm going to explain this in, uh, in simple terms. If you're going to do something there's three components that are going to give you stress, anxiety, nerves, bad energy, whatever you want to call it and the three components are the task demands, what is it you have to do, your perceived resources, so what it is you've got about you or what have you done that is forms a resource for you to be competent in this, and then the perceived importance. And we can think of it as these three areas all overlap like a Venn diagram, and in the middle that determines then how stressed you are, how not stressed you are about the performance. So I used the example that if I wanted to cause you stress before a date, I might say something like, in terms of the perceived task demands, they're expecting a lot, what have you got planned as a backup for this date? So I've just made the date more difficult and added more demands on top of that. Whereas if I want to decrease your resources, I'd say you've got no experience of dating somebody who's just grown up and got their life together, therefore I've decreased your resources. I also might then increase your importance that you're placing on this by going it's about time you settle down best not mess this one up so when we increase the task demands what we have to do we increase the importance how important it is and then we increase or decrease the resources we take away what competencies you've got and make those diminished this becomes a monumental monumental thing that you have to try and accomplish and that's your frame of mind going into it so what we want to do is we want to do the opposite of that. So the example I use then would be, you've had more first dates than, hot di than I've had hot dinners. And that shows, oh wait, you've done this before. That decreases somebody's resources. Similarly, we would uh, decrease, sorry, that increases somebody's resources. Okay, because we're talking about their experience. Then we would also go and seek to decrease the task demands so on a date you know you may think well you're gonna to have to have a conversation you're gonna to have to go somewhere do something you know there's gonna to have to sustain this conversation there's a lot of task demands there but actually you need to start the convo and then just listen to what they have to say and see if you're interested so in that scenario that sort of frame of mind of that bit of feedback would decrease the task demands and similarly we can reduce the importance of it and when we reduce the importance it doesn't become as pressureful we would say it's just a date it doesn't have to lead anywhere and you might not even like them so as we see if we increase somebody's resources if we decrease the task demands and if we decrease the perceived importance that's going to lower the stress but this applies to all areas of life and as I said I've used it with people who have won medals but I've also used it uh, with uh, people who've gone into court. This actually caused them to lower the stress and then be able to more focus on the controllables of their task. So let's look at this in a couple other domains before we talk about this in relation to motivational interview. So another couple of domains would be in weight management. So somebody, I'm not saying weight loss, I'm saying weight management because it's not important that we lose weight, it's important in sport that we manage our weight. So 
If you want to increase their perceived resources to boost confidence, you'd say, look, you've managed your weight for you know this period of time, two, three weeks at a time. All we're looking to do is that instead of you come off the wagon after two, three weeks, you just do another four or five days where you stay on that. And then we've got a three week block of success. So you've done this for two weeks. Can we do it for two weeks in one day? Uh, and what that's doing is that increasing their perceived resources because they're then realizing they've been successful for two weeks. They just have to maintain that, all right? The failure point might have come at like two weeks in one day. So we're talking about highlighting the success and growing that perceived resource. Then we're gonna decrease the task demands. Weight management, and I'm not a nutritionist, but weight management is primarily either you're gonna go two ways about it. You're gonna count your calories, you're gonna plan your meals. So all we have to do is either count the calories or plan the meals. Two simple options. We're not worried about the total amount of calories, we're just aware, worried about the awareness of what's going in. So when you think about a task, you wanna go like, okay, this task can be broken down into 10 chunks. What's the first step? What's the smallest chunk? Okay, now there might be even smaller chunks in that example that you could break this down to. The next thing we wanna do is decrease the importance. This is so important to you, it's worth failing at. So let's not get too stressed if it doesn't work out. We're here to work it out in the long term, not the short term. And that's interesting as a, as a reframe, as a bit of information, because what we're saying is, this is so important, it's worth failing at. Therefore, it's definitely worth trying to do. We're not putting it on the, the basis of, this is so important, you have to, have to succeed. Because the things you have to succeed at, they're not as important as the things that, even if you fail, are still worth trying. So it's still worth trying to, you know, be a good friend, be a good family member, that type of thing. Because even if you fail at it, it's still worth doing. Whereas if you uh, are trying to achieve something like, oh, I wanna run a 9.97 in 100 meters. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kinda worth doing, but like, if you don't do it, it's not as serious as like being a good friend or uh, being a good family member or father or mother, etc. So what are the things that I often, Please sidetrack, but I often say to people, like, what are the things worth doing that you'll never regret? And if you write those down, that's a good source of motivation, but that's a topic for another day. Now, job interview. To increase somebody's perceived resources, you don't get an interview if you're not suitable to be hired. Okay, that's gonna boost their confidence because they've already been selected to be hired. And then similarly, to decrease the task demands, you're only talking about your, you're only talking about yourself. No one knows you better. I've made the job, uh, the requirements for a job interview much more simple and give them uh, an area that they can focus on that they're in control of. So it's reduced the task complexity. Yes, there's definitely other things you need to consider, but just focus on that one thing will reduce your nerves. And then decrease the importance of this. Remember, they have to be right for you. You don't want a job, the job if it's a hellhole. We've all had jobs that are hell holes. But if you frame it in that way, again, it changes the pressure on the person because we're decreasing the importance. So these three ways of decreasing somebody's stress, pressure, nerves, anxiety, whatever you want to call it, are very useful. Now, in motivational interviewing terms, what we don't really want to do is we don't want to be tellers. Yes, you can tell people in motivational interviewing, but the reality is that when somebody tells you something, quite often it can minimize your experience. It can make you feel as if you're not being listened to. And you know, you're having a shit day and you come along and somebody says, oh, it's a great day, don't worry, look at all this. That can be kind of seen as not listening, as dismissive, and therefore any information you put into somebody is met with a brick wall. At that point, it becomes a little bit difficult to impact behavior change and what have you. So it's actually useful maybe and we want to think about this critically because in a high stress position, somebody might not be able to think clearly. So you might want to do this maybe a day, maybe two or three days, or maybe you start thinking about this in the weeks coming up to competition or the job interview or whatever it is. When we think that somebody might be under stress and not able to take in the information, what we want to do is maybe in the days prior, Use motivational interviewing skills such as open questions and reflections to highlight areas 
that align to this framework for reducing stress. So what can I reflect back to them that highlights their resources? What can I reflect back to them that this isn't important? And what can I reflect back to them that they, we are decreasing the simplicity of the task? Or if I can't reflect back because they're not giving me anything to reflect back to them, then what open questions can I ask that probe and explore that curiously? So I could say something like, what is it that gives you confidence about this? Why is this only one part of your life that's important? See that? I'm increasing the other parts of their life and their importance, and that's decreasing the focus on the importance of the event. Um, and then also, why is this a simple task? What's the most simple aspect of this for you? What's the most comfortable aspect of this for you? What's, what is your sport? What is your delivery in its basis? So in court, for example, the person who was going to court, I said to them, do you control the judge? Do you control what the other person says if they lie? Do you control the outcome? No. Okay, so what is your task? Your task is simple. It is just to speak clearly and calmly. And as a result, that person actually got complimented by the judge on how professional they were and how calmly and clearly they spoke. So when you focus in on the demands and make the demands really simple, that then cascades. If somebody achieves that first demand of, look, just take a deep breath, say what you need to say, don't worry about the outcome in court, and then that person achieves success by uttering the first line, well, on this day, this is what occurred. Oh, I can speak. I can speak clearly. I know what I'm going to say. I'm prepared. The things begin to flow. And as a result of that, their confidence rises up. So think about this from a point of view of how do you create a small, achievable, controllable feature that will decrease the task demands, that when they achieve it, they actually will go on to have more confidence. All you need to do is walk out onto the platform with your chest held high and get ready to grab the bar. Right? Simple. Everything else will come naturally. Okay? If you break it down into the simple things that they can control and they know they can do, then what you're doing is you're highlighting the ways that they can actually achieve success and that whole cascade into future performance, into the rest of the performance. So what should you take away from this? Increase their perceived resources, whatever that might be, decrease the task demands, and decrease the importance of the event. When you do that, either through asking questions like, why, is, why are you confident about this? What is it you're definitely sure you can do? Or asking questions like, what is it that is the simplest thing that you will most easily achieve on the day? And then decrease the importance. What other areas of your life are more important than this? For what would you give up this so that you could do something else? You know, what would you prioritize above it? And again, that's reframing the importance of it. So increase the perceived resources, decrease the task demands, and decrease the importance uh, and you're gonna have a good impact on what that person is experiencing whenever they're competing. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and please subscribe to the Instagram channel at Podium Psychology. If you're interested in motivational interviewing, and learning more about this and why it's such a beneficial tool. I run courses once a week a year and they're very oversubscribed, so get in touch early and often. Thank you very much.